Okay, welcome to module three. I uh, hope everybody got through those science papers okay. Um, there's a reason why I throw those at you so early in the semester because they're not so much fun. They're a little bit interesting, but uh, they're a bit of a chore, so I didn't want to wait until the end of the semester to give them to you. I thought I'd get it over with now, so you're welcome. Um, by the way, a couple people complained about um, how tough they were to read and blamed it on APA. It's not APA's fault. Don't blame APA. APA is just a citation style, like MLA or Chicago. In fact, I think a lot of people agree with me that Chicago is the worst. And one of my best friends is a historian. I wouldn't say that to his face. But APA, it's not hard. It's the fact that these, the reason these were hard is because they're scientific papers written for scientists, not because it was APA style necessarily. And also, there was a poll. I asked people to name, uh, to pick the one that they chose for the discussion boards, and here's the top three. Ready? The first one, most popular, was the effects of music therapy. I'd say that one was far and away the most popular, for obvious reasons. Um, as much as I hate generalities, I'd be willing to say everybody likes music. And very many people who actually picked this one, or several people, also had problem with depression, which um, I think a lot of us out there either have it or have uh, known someone who has it. Um, I have it. So uh, this is near and dear to my heart as well. The second one, Facebook. Facebook's emotional consequences. And they're not good, as you might guess. By the way, there's an article in the book called this Facebook making us lonely so if you're interested in Facebook as a social science topic um, or a psychological topic um, that, that's a good one and the third one was the younger children's and nursing students not a surprise to me although I was surprised that that didn't commit number one because there are so many nursing students in this class so that's module two moving along Module 3 I have titled Writing for Dummies, and that's not an insult for you. Um, it's obviously based on the old book series, Blank for Dummies. Um, this is science writing for non-scientists, who we are. And finally we're going to get to this. Is it backwards? No, you got it. Okay. Here's the book, Best American Science and Nature Writing, 2013. It's edited by uh, that guy named Siddhartha Mukherjee, who's a uh, cancer doctor. He just wrote a popular book, I think called The Emperor of All Maladies. It's about cancer, so that's why they chose him. Every year they put this out and they choose a new person to edit it, usually someone who's in the limelight, pretty popular. So we'll do some readings from that for Module 3. One thing to remember about this kind of science writing. It has to engage the general reader. Scientists, you don't have to worry about it too much because they're going to read for the information. The general reader has to be engaged immediately. Remember from 101, the first step in a 101 paper was to engage your audience. These are no different. A lot of them start with an anecdote or a story. And they're the reason a lot of people read, the reason they go to movies, the reason they watch TV, um, the same reasons why these uh, stories are written and the same elements go into these articles. They call it narrative journalism sometimes, for good reason. Characters are important. important thing about this kind of science writing is it's less about the science itself than about the people doing it. So keep that in mind because people love people, as I always say. Um, I would say there's dialogue if there's going to be people. There's a vivid description of the people, what they look like, what they're wearing, anything unusual about them. For instance, there's an article about women who are um, trying to solve a bat issue. We'll probably get to that one later in the semester. Uh, the bats are going extinct, and there are some researchers. And one woman has a tiny little bat tattoo behind her ear. You know, that's the kind of thing that you'll see thrown into these articles setting. Any story needs a setting. Is it the ocean? Is it a lab? Is it a cave? Is it a forest? 
Okay, uh, the setting is very important for these kinds of stories because it's it's a narrative. Drama has to tell a story. That's why people read. You know, page turners. That's why they call them page turners. People read to find out what's going to happen. If you read mysteries, if you watch mysteries, if you knew what was going to happen, you probably wouldn't keep reading. Unless the book's really good. I know some books I've read many times, uh, but there aren't very many books that are that good that you're going to read more than once. Um, plot. Why don't we have a plot? A scientist is trying to do something, and something is thrown up in her way or his way, and they have to overcome it, whether it's a virus or whatever the case may be. So there's conflict, all that stuff. Resolution, sometimes, not always. So this is, again, narrative journalism. Some of it reads like fiction, and it's meant to. Okay. And again, let me restate what I said. This kind of writing, it's more about the people doing the science, usually, than it is the science itself. That's how they hook you. Okay, so... Um, Let's move on to the next video, and I'll show you what the readings and the assignments are for this module. Okay. Talk to you later.